It's Friday, March 24. In the headlines, a constitutional reform committee has been named and we highlight a young mathematician making her mark in her community. In business news, JP Group acquires Belgian company. Regionally, Guyana is pushing a solar alliance. Internationally, TikTok CEO faces off with U.S. legislators in hearing. And in sports, Jamaica to face Puerto Rico in ice hockey match. This is the news on PBC Jamaica. I'm Simone Absalom Gale. The Constitutional Reform Committee was named on Wednesday. It's the latest move by the government as it prepares to make changes to Jamaica's constitution as the country begins its journey to become a republic. Prime Minister Andrew Honus made the announcement at the office of the Prime Minister, noting that the committee will be chaired by Minister of Legal and Constitutional Affairs, Mrs. Marlene Malahu Fort. Uh, Ambassador Rocky Mead, CD will act as co-chair, uh, and uh, Ambassador Mead works out of the office of the Prime Minister. Dr. Derek McCoy, CD, JP, KC, Attorney General of Jamaica. Senator, the Honorable Tom Tavares Finson, OJ, CD, KC. <laughs> Senator Ransford Braham, CD, KC, uh, Government Senator. The other members include Members of Parliament Donna Scott Motley and Anthony Hilton, International Constitutional Law Expert Professor Richard Albert, National Constitutional Expert Dr. Lloyd Barnett, Attorney at Law Hugh Small, Representing Faith-Based Groups Dr. David Henry, Representing Civil Society Dr. Nadine Spence, Lalita Davis Mattis of the National Reparations Committee, and youth advisor, Sujay Boswell. Prime Minister Holness also noted the job of the Reform Committee. Uh, review the work that has already been taken place uh, in this regard. To pull from that body of work what is relevant to today's circumstances. To give advice and to guide the overall process. He says Jamaica's journey to become a constitutional republic is not a straightforward one. There may be the view that it is a straightforward and simple task of just changing the name of the country from that of a constitutional monarch to a republic. Uh, that is not the case. Uh, there are many legal steps that we have to go through and uh, there is the matter of a referendum. The outcome of which no one can. Jamaica is a constitutional monarchy with a parliamentary system of government where the king is technically head of state, represented by the governor general. Before Jamaica makes a switch to republic governance, such a change would require a referendum currently scheduled for 2025. Before that time, the Constitutional Reform Committee must produce its recommendation in a timely fashion to allow the government to mobilize a public opinion in advance of the referendum. Predial larceny continues to be a problem for farmers in St. Thomas. Our news team spoke to one farmer who says he is frustrated by the constant theft. We have the details in this report. This farmer is located at East Albion, St. Thomas. He's appealing to Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, Pernell Charles Jr., to do more to help farmers combat the scourge of predial larceny. Because just recently, I bought some chemical. And as quick as I do that, then come and steal it. They steal my fertilizer. And all those that, and then we're doing these things over the years. Yeah? And they have not been caught. And if they do get caught, they have no serious consequences to bear. So they come back on the street. Because when farmers spend three and four hundred thousand dollars for putting anything, and then somebody come and take it away. Yeah? It's a downfall. 
and it break them up in a, in a way. It's not every farmer can stand up in it. Some can stand and some can stand. So what may I say to the Minister of Agriculture, we have the power to help us. He says he has lost thousands of dollars due to thieves making off with crops and fertilizers. The estimate I want me really lose is about just a little over 300,000. Okay? But by 120 something thousand dollars worth of fertilizer, and may have to replace replace the chemical when I buy over $100,000 and I have to still replace it after they steal it and they still come back and thief again. According to a 2016 Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agricultural Study, predial larceny results in loss of up to 321 million U.S. dollars annually or an estimated 17.9% of Caribbean agricultural output. Jamaican farmers suffer losses of up to $5 billion per annum due to that criminal activity. Minister Charles says the ministry, through the Predial Larceny Prevention Unit, has been pursuing several strategies to combat the illegal activity. For the News on PBCJ, I'm Simone Absalom Gale. A hero is a person who is admired for their courage, outstanding achievement or noble qualities. This month's community hero is one such person. Her charity started in the home and spread throughout her hometown, Linstead, and beyond. The role of a teacher is to inspire, motivate, encourage, and educate learners. That describes this community hero, Amoy Page, and her subject of choice is mathematics. Went to Holy Child High School, did sixth form at Dintel Technical High School where I was the deputy head girl. So after Dintel I went to UWE and again I studied math. I studied actual science. Um, it's pretty much risk management but a lot of math and um, I realized that I was just, it was, it, that kind of concreted my passion that I had for math when I realized that, okay, I'm going to take this to a different level, CXC. I did Cape Maths also, and the teacher was pretty young. So it was six of us in the class, and technically the teacher made seven students because she was young and new to the whole Cape Math thing, so we were all learning together. So it was a lot of research, having to figure out things together, and that kind of concrete my love for math. I realized that, okay, I really like this thing. And her grades in Cape? Ones, all ones. When did your love of math begin? From when I was in grade four, my parents decided to send me to math class. So I was doing math Saturday class for GSAT from grade four um, in Linstead. And then when I passed GSAT, started to go to high school, my father started sending me to CXC math classes from grade nine. So I was doing, I was pretty much ready to do CXC math from grade nine, but my father decided not to send, not to allow me to do the exam. So I did the exam in grade 11. So I did three years of CXC math. And then I just realized that I love math from ever since. It was pretty much interesting to solve. So you know that when you solve a math problem, if it's hard, so for instance, circle theorem, it's hard to kind of like, find x because it's a lot of angles and things so when i realized that i actually find it that joy that i find inside it was just okay i need to continue doing this because the joy that i get afterwards was just so satisfying so i realized that you know there was this love for math from ever since and just solving the problems it just was peaceful there are times when i'm bored and i actually go do a math question so yeah I have a little tagline that math is beautiful. If you love math, it will love you. So just show, just be kind and gentle to math and you'll realize that it starts to look different. When you look at it through a different lens, I promise you, you'll realize that it's easy. It's actually easy. It's, it's just simple steps to, <laughs> it's just simple steps to, to solving something that seems complicated. So if you know that one plus one is two, you just want the basics. One plus one is two. So if them give you two plus one, you already know that you just need to add one more. It's building blocks. 
it's like building blocks. Let me just put it that way. How did the teaching come into play? So from ever since, um, I always teach. So I would teach the furniture, I would teach the teddy bears, I would teach my little sister. My little sister is eight years, my, eight years younger than me. So sometimes I'd go to her and I'd say, okay, this is how you do this. As much as she won't understand because she's a, it's a good gap between the both of us. I'd always teach her, I'd always just, and again, from I talk to the furniture, you must know that it's serious. So they're not responding, I don't know if they understand, but my thing is once I can explain it to you, then I understand it. So I would teach, and then when my sister now got to grade 10, she would always come to me asking me to help her with some little tricks. How do I remember this? It's been so long, how do you even remember it? What do you do, right? And I said, okay, and I started teaching her and telling her how to do things and some little tricks that I had. And then she started telling her friends, and then her friends didn't want me to tell them the tricks as well, and then that was how this whole Mathamoy tricks birthing teaching persons how to do math came about. Give us an example. Well, I have a little song. So there's this little song to row, row, row your boat. It says, um, same sign, add and keep, different sign, subtract. Keep the sign of the larger number, that will be exact. So if you're doing direct numbers, if you have a negative, negative two minus one, how do I remember that that's negative three? If the signs are the same, negative two and negative one, the signs are the same. So you add the numbers and then keep the sign, right? If the signs are different, so if it was negative five plus two, you would subtract the numbers and then keep the sign at a larger number and that would be exact. So there are little things, little tricks that would help you to remember how to go about doing it. We encourage Ms. Page to continue her good works. It's time now for the business report with Danita Rodney. Jamaica Producers Group, JP, has completed another acquisition of a beverage manufacturer in Europe. In a release on the Jamaica Stock Exchange this week, the company announced 100% acquisition of Belgium-based Juicy Group NV and HPP Belgium NV. This move positions the company to become a market leader in the fresh juice industry in Europe, operating in the Netherlands, Belgium and Spain. With each location having its own unique target market and brand, JP will continue to provide a wide range of cold-pressed fresh juices and smoothies across the continent, taking advantage of high-pressure processing at each state-of-the-art production facility. Now for your market updates. In foreign exchange trading for Thursday, March 23, the US dollar sold for an average of $152.36, the Canadian dollar ended trading at $110.75. The pound sterling traded for $183.91. And the euro sold for an average of $161.18. In GSE trading, the GSE index declined by 2,550 points. The junior market index declined by 48 points. The Combined Market Index declined by 2,830 points and the All Jamaican Composite Index declined by 3,601 points. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 125 stocks of which 32 advanced, 57 declined and 36 traded firm. Stocks advanced for 138 Student Living Jamaica Limited, Barisa Investments Limited, and Honeybun 1982 Limited. Stocks declined for AMG Packaging and Paper Company Limited, Blue Power Group Limited, and Cargo Handlers Limited. Trading firm were Derrimon Trading Company Limited, Dolphin Cove Limited, and Elite Diagnostics Limited. The overall volume leaders were First Rock Real Estate Investments Limited USD with over 19 million units, Future Energy Source Company Limited Ordinary Shares with over 7 million units, and Dollar Financial Services Limited with over 3 million units. In regional stocks, in Trinidad and Tobago, Zero Securities traded. On the Barbados Stock Exchange, Zero Securities traded. 
In regional business, the International Solar Alliance ISA, is extending its hand to all member countries, including Trinidad and Tobago, to assist in deploying solar energy technology in respective countries. TTT Sunilala reports. Chief of Operations at the International Solar Alliance wants TNT to be an active member, noting that the possibilities are endless to help sustain the country's solar energy needs. Yeah, the first thing I'd love to do, be able to see, is explore the opportunity of being able to have a solar roadmap for the country, and the roadmap would define the milestones, the objectives, and uh, the pathways to being able to achieve those. Speaking to TTT News in India, Mr. Wycliffe noted that Trinidad and Tobago, like the rest of the world, have been attempting to make strides in the Solar Energy Trust and said the ISA can help in this regard. He added specific plans to approach TNT soon. Welcome. During our meetings, um, the regional meetings, we offer uh, the opportunity to partner with. We involve and we invite. Uh, with Trinidad and Tobago, we would like to have a special session, a bilateral meeting later during this year to come for the uh, regional meeting and we'd like to take things forward and progress. Mr. Wycliffe also spoke about providing support to Trinidad and Tobago with some of its future solar projects. If, if they're happy to engage with us, we would more than welcome to look at how we can mobilize and support them with the resources. Um, being able to work in various areas in the agricultural area, uh, in the fishing business, fishing industry, in the marine industry. See some of the areas that solar can really make a lot of impact in terms of cold storage for our farmers and fish um, export groups. So we'd love to work with um, Trinidad and Tobago in these areas. The International Solar Alliance was jointly launched by India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi, along with others in 2015, and was done to drive the energy transition. 114 countries have signed the framework agreement of the ISA, of which 92 countries have since ratified it. Sonolala, TTT News. In international business, Wall Street closed higher as market participants were sued by reassurances that measures will be taken to keep American banks' deposits safe. Wall Street seesawed to close higher on Thursday. The Dow ticked up two-tenths of a percent, the S&P 500 three-tenths, and the Nasdaq a full percent. The session followed Wednesday's slide that came after the Fed's quarter-point rate hike, Chair Jerome Powell's subsequent Q&A session, and Yellen's testimony before Congress in which she ruled out blanket protection for all deposits. Well, I think the market volatility that we are seeing today is just a reflection of the challenges that the Federal Reserve created by raising interest rates nine consecutive times. While interest rate hikes by central banks around the world have stressed the banking sector, most notably with the recent failures of SVB Financial and Signature Bank, Tim Pagliera, chairman and chief investment officer of Cap Wealth, believes markets have been notably resilient. For example, SVB Bank, you know, it's the first collapse of a bank in history that wasn't credit related. And so this whole concept of the dangers of the bond market, duration, whether or not deposits were insured, I think the market has taken all of this in stride very well. In market data for oil, oil prices fell sharply amid declining European banking shares and after claims that refilling U.S. strategic petroleum reserve may take several years dampening demand prospects. Brent crude fell $2.50 to $73.41 a barrel, while West Texas Intermediate Crude Futures dived $2.47 to $67.49 a barrel. And that was the Business Report on PBCJ. I'm Denita Rodney. In regional news, we start with news out of Trinidad and Tobago. CARICOM must look more urgently at its land issues. This from Minister of Planning and Development Penelope Beckles. Speaking at the fifth high-level forum of the Partnership Initiative for Sustainable Land Management on Thursday, the minister noted climate change trends indicate that spells of drought are going to become more frequent and severe. Minister of Planning and Development Penelope Beckles said beyond more frequent and severe spells of drought, climate change trends can also have a negative impact on food security. Now, it could be argued 
that these problems may be bridged with engineering and economic solutions where food is imported, retaining, reinforcing structures are built, and water is desalinated. However, what this does is that it creates a reliance on technologies that necessitate high capital and recurrent expenditure, as well as being prone to periodic and unexpected downtime. The minister said Caribbean economies would be made more robust and resilient if the decision to adopt more nature-based solutions is chosen since they not only optimize the provision of ecosystem goods and services, but they also minimize those aforementioned costs, providing in the bargain economic flexibility to deploy revenue for other purposes. The fifth high-level forum is a biennial summit of the leaders of the region's land management ministries. Ministers from across the Caribbean community are meeting to review the implementation of PISM's sustainable land and soil management projects currently impacting 10 nations, Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Belize, Commonwealth of Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, Haiti, Jamaica, St. Lucia and Trinidad and Tobago. The International Solar Alliance has developed a new funding scheme to help vulnerable countries upgrade their energy infrastructure to use more solar energy, which is believed to be better for the environment. This new facility was developed after Guyana's president, Dr. Ifran Ali, called for more funding to help Caribbean countries at an ISA regional meeting held in Guyana in August. We have now developed a finance facility that will take care of the fears and the nervousness of lenders and developers who want to go in. One is called a payment guarantee. So suppose there's a debt or there's a credit people borrow from the bank. We provide a payment guarantee for a handholding period, a period of handholding, where if the returns are not in there, we are able to compensate them once. Second is we also have an insurance premium support where you provide support for payment of insurance premium. So if there's a loss due to certain things like calamity, crisis, or issues, we're able to step in and insurance premium will sort that out. We also have investment support. So this is a unique product. We are about to raise, uh, we are in the process of raising $250 million for Africa alone to be able to provide this facility. We would also like to now expand it to the other regions, including the Asia Pacific and the Latin American countries and Caribbean countries. Since we had the meeting the last time in Guyana, the teams come up and put together the basic model of how solar access it has evolved over the last six or seven months. So the first of that model is being launched in Africa. Like I said, 80% um, of the energy resources required sits within the continent. That does not mean to say we are ignoring the rest of the world. So the model has been kind of worked through the last six months to be able to come across through both Caribbean and the Asian. The United States is reaffirming its commitment to the continued development of a regional security system. More from SKN Newsline. Her Excellency Linda Tagliatella reaffirmed the commitment of the United States government to the continued development of the Regional Security System, RSS, when the RSS Council of Ministers met on 22nd March in Grenada. The meeting was attended by Senkis and Nevis Prime Minister Dr. Terence Drew, who is also the Minister of National Security. Recognizing the complexity of threats facing the region from natural hazards, climate change to narcotics and human trafficking and the illegal trade in firearms, Tagliatello said the United States will continue to collaborate with the RSS in fighting transnational crime. Eastern Caribbean countries created the RSS out of a need for a collective response to security threats. Over the years, these threats have become only more complex and multidimensional. From cyber threats to climate change to illicit trafficking and money laundering, the institution continues to grow and adapt so that it can better equip its member states to confront these challenges. As it does so, the United States will continue to stand by the RSS and invest in this partnership that we have developed over time. In particular, the RSS has a unique perspective on the threats that the Eastern Caribbean faces from transnational organized crime. 
to meet its core goal of providing immediate and threat appropriate responses to all situations, the IRSS must be forward thinking and adaptable. Under the Caribbean Basin Security Initiative, or CBSI, the United States continues to collaborate with the RSS on efforts to tackle the transnational criminal threat. Some examples of how countries benefit directly from the CBSI programs, both through the RSS and Bilero, include, first, technical assistance and equipment to improve maritime interdiction capabilities, including interceptor boats and logistics and maintenance support. Second, we provide advisory support to financial investigation units across the region that work diligently to deny criminals the proceeds of their offenses. Third, we support programs to modernize the criminal justice sector. And finally, we continue to invest in expanding digital forensic capabilities in the region. As close partners of the RSS, representatives of the United States, the European Union, and the Caribbean Development Bank participated in the RSS Council of Ministers meeting that was also attended by Sinks and News' Prime Minister. Glenn Bart reporting for SK Newsline. In news further afield, head of the world's fastest growing social media app has faced five hours of questioning by a United States House committee. TikTok's CEO, Shu Ji Chu, was grilled about teenage safety and data security. Al Jazeera's Mike Hanna reports. It was a rare moment of bipartisanship in a divided Congress. Welcome to the most bipartisan committee in Congress. We may not always agree on how to get there, but we care about our, our national security. At issue here are free speech rights, federal control of social media, and national security issues. In recent days, Sho Zi Chu and his team have been lobbying in Washington, including meeting with each member of this committee. The charm offensive carried on TikTok itself. I'm super excited to announce that more than 150 million Americans are on TikTok. That's almost half of the U.S. But congressional critics were not deterred. TikTok is a grave threat of foreign influence in American life. It's been said it's like allowing the Soviet Union the power to produce Saturday morning cartoons during the Cold War, but much more powerful and much more dangerous. And I'm going to put a shot. And shown to the committee disturbing TikTok content that was found on the feed of a 16-year-old who killed himself by jumping in front of a train. It's alleged the content contributed to his suicide. We must save our children from big tech companies like yours. Number one. We will keep safety, particularly for teenagers, as a top priority for us. Xu insisted TikTok didn't share information with the Chinese government, saying the company would take steps to ensure independent monitoring of data use. All protected U.S. data will be under the protection of U.S. law and under the control of the U.S.-led security team. A few liberal members of the House have opposed the move to shut down TikTok, the primary fear that this would be against the First Amendment, the freedom of speech clause in the Constitution. But it appeared the majority support either shutting the app down or forcing a sale to a U.S. company. The FBI director has told Congress that TikTok represents a national security threat. The federal government has ordered that it be removed from all federal devices. The previous administration attempted to shut TikTok down but the move was stopped by the courts. And whatever emerges from these hearings, there's likely at some stage to be a protracted legal argument based on First Amendment grounds. Mike Hanna, Al Jazeera, Washington. In sports, we head into the rink with hockey. Jamaica is set to head to New York City in June for a three-match series against Puerto Rico. In a release, the Jamaica Ice Hockey Federation says discussions have been underway for some time now in an effort to find dates and rinks to hold the event. It says the dates have now been set for June 8th to the 11th, with matches scheduled to be played each evening of the 8th, 9th and 10th. The tournament venue will be announced by the end of this week. And that's it for the news on PBCJ. I'm Simone Absalom Gale. Remember, you can follow us on our social media platforms at PBC Jamaica. And remember, we are the People's Station.